Is that super obnoxious? Because I really hope it is. Actually, that's really, really obnoxious. Do you guys wanna hear a funny story really quick before we get into the video? Of course you do. So Valentine's Day was yesterday and I did my thing. We had fun, great, great, great time, okay? And I got home today and I was taking a shower and literally in the midst of my shower, I was having a great shower, I hear a knock on my door. So I start panicking because I was like, oh my God, who's, who is at my apartment? And I thought maybe it was like a package or something. So I jump out of the shower. I'm just like soaking wet. I throw on random clothes that I find on the floor and like open the door and that's, it, that's what I got today. It's been a good day so far. I also spent about an hour getting a picture of me at a dining table. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, you haven't seen it, so go follow me on Twitter. But I'll have a new Tinder video soon, if that means anything for you. But this is not a Tinder video or rambly video or anything to do with anything but scary stories. I don't have another scary story for you guys, but I have more of your paranormal stories that I'm gonna read to you. That was a really cool Segway? Is that, what it's called? is that what it's called? And again, I didn't prep anything for this video, so we're pretty much just gonna have to go through and hope for the best. So in the email alone, I have about 800 emails, awesome. And then in DMs and stuff, I have a, probably a couple hundred more. I know I said I would do Twitter and Instagram in this one, but I don't think I'm going to. I'll do it next time. Those ones I actually have to go through and like really look through them because I have a lot of random ones that just that aren't, that aren't scary. Sorry. So I actually have to go through those ones. Most of the email ones, it's pretty easy to find like the actually scary ones. Also, I'm probably gonna wear this shirt in like my next 20 videos. I'm obsessed with it. If you guys didn't see my last video, the video I posted yesterday, this is from Hot Topic because I know everyone's gonna ask. Hot Topic. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, let's go. Okay, well this one's called I Made a Mistake. I can relate. Let's read this one. This is from Audrey. That says, when I was in sixth grade, I had just moved to a new house. It was a condo unit connected to three other houses. The first week I lived there, I'd already noticed that something was very wrong. At night, I would hear noises. It sounded as if somebody had been dragging their feet across the carpet in my bedroom. I've had that happen before. Every now and then, I would hear people whispering. I told my parents, but they thought I was just freaking myself out watching those ghost hunting shows. We were still in the process of moving in, so my mom decided to take us to some yard sales so maybe we could get some things to decorate our rooms. We saw a table at this one yard sale with a free sign Oh my god, there are two men that just... Hey guys. What was it? We saw a table at one yard sale that had a big sign that said free. I walked over to the table and immediately saw a Ouija board set up on top of everything else. My mom let me get it because she thought it would keep me and the rest of my siblings busy for a few hours. Mom. She also didn't really understand what a Ouija board was, so she didn't really see any harm in it. My siblings and I only thought about which one of us had to have been moving it. My mom decided she would play it with me to show that it was all in my head, so I would hopefully get some sleep that night. We sat down at the bathroom floor. The bathroom? Why the bathroom? And set up the board. Is anyone here with us? I asked. No answer. Is anyone here with us? Slowly but surely, the planchette began to move to yes. Are you going to hurt us? No. What's your name? What do we call you? G-O-D. I looked at my mom in disbelief. I ran out of the room crying. I truly believe she didn't move it. She was just trying to get me to sleep through the night without being scared. After that, things got worse. See, airplanes, airplanes. I can never open these. <sighs> Noises were louder, the whispering was louder, and it always felt like you were never alone. About a month later, my cousin Sean came to visit. He wasn't really the type of person to be frightened easily. I don't even like where this is going so far. So that night, he came into my mom's room and said, Auntie, I can't sleep. I hear people whispering. We really knew that there was a problem. He didn't even know about the Ouija board. He knew nothing about it. That December, we decided to move. It was just too much. I was left alone in the house to pack, and I could hear somebody screaming. Audrey, Audrey, come help. Screaming screaming. I left and never went back. We asked the landlord if they had ever gotten any complaints about the house and they said no, they never had any complaints. However, the people next door to you when they moved out found camera systems all around the inside of the house. Like they had cameras watching them and they didn't know. To this day, that sentence still confuses me. What were they trying to catch inside the house? Oh no, 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 they had cameras in the house, Never mind. I was like, this just went a whole different direction. <laughs> After moving, I never dealt with anything abnormal in my house, but I will never forget how scared I was living in that condo. Holy shit. All right, good start to the fucking video, huh? This bitch drew us a picture of what she saw. Okay, this is from Emily. This says, my nightmare becomes real with illustration. I'll put the picture right here. Actually, I'm not gonna put it here yet. We're gonna put it there when we get to the part of the story where you need to see the illustration. She said, before the story, I would just like to apologize for how long the story is, though I hardly think you will ever see this or read it. You were wrong. 
Emily. My name's Emily, and I've heard stories from my family not to mess with anything relating to spirits. Before this experience, I was interested in the topic of the paranormal, but I never had an experience before this, and I still watch things about it now, but not as often. I have a phobia of the dark. What happened doesn't help and it makes it worse. It only kicked my fear of the dark into overdrive. I was about 12, almost 13, and it was October. Me and my very small class were going on a field trip for three days. I was really excited to go. The trip was supposed to reinforce the bond between everybody. The drive was about three hours since it was almost out of the state, just on the border. When we got there, it was exciting. We got to our cabin and went into our subcatag- I don't know how to say that word. Subcategoric rooms. I'm not good at like reading big words. You guys have probably noticed by now. I'm not the smartest cookie. Since there were very few girls, we all slept in the same room for two nights. When we were starting to unpack, one of our roommates went into the bathroom. It wasn't long until she came back and slammed the door behind her and sat right against the wall. We all asked what was wrong, being very confused as to why she was almost out of breath, breathing heavily. She didn't speak for about a minute and then answered, I was in the stall and somebody was in the bathroom with me. The bathroom stall door slammed shut and opened again. No. We were all in shock and no one was willing to go in there to see if anybody else was in there. I volunteered to go in. You're a brave soul, Emily. I volunteered to go in with a friend of mine. Okay, good. Smart, smart choice. It probably would have been smarter to ask an adult, but we didn't think they'd believe us if we told them. We pushed open the door and it was quiet and eerie. The minute we stepped onto the yellow and white tile floor, I got a sinking feeling in my stomach. The faucet turned on. My friend and I stared at the faucet for a few seconds and we bolted out of the room and went to go tell our- Oh, we went to go tell our roommates what happened! Oh, this fucking haunted cabin shit. Another one of my friends was shaking and didn't want anything to do with that bathroom. I didn't either. None of us did. I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't even go to the bathroom the rest of the time. I would just, I just would hold it in forever. But of course, because we were staying there for three days, we had to. When it came time to shower, we had to decide who was taking showers in the morning and at night. I requested showers at night, but I was bumped down to mornings. I hated it since I'm such a night owl. I would rather shower in the daytime when there's light and light. Every time I stepped in the bathroom, I got a weird sensation that I was being watched. I had a friend who also had to take morning showers, and I begged her to stay within the bathroom while I was there. It was not normal for me to ask something of someone, but I was afraid that something would happen. Nothing strange really happened until the second night. We were around a fire, and I heard one of the volunteers with the group come out of the women's bathroom. Let's just name her Mrs. Williams for the sake of the story. I immediately take note of the situation, listening in on the conversation. I tried not to, but I couldn't tune it out of my ears. I heard Mrs. Williams say, can I talk to you? Something is not right with that bathroom. They went off to the side, but I can still hear the conversation. I was in the bathroom and I heard somebody talking. One of the doors slammed while I was washing my hands. I couldn't speak or focus once I heard this. What the f fuck? What the heck is happening? I knew that once I heard it, I had to tell my friends. I was sitting right next to my friend who I went to the bathroom with, and at the start, I whispered quietly so nobody could hear me. Mrs. Williams said she heard a door shut while she was in there. She looked at me strangely, but got what I was saying. She decided to pass on what I had said to the girl with a similar experience. She, of course, was surprised. I'm surprised nobody asked why I was listening to the conversation, but I suspect it was because they didn't care what I did. I wouldn't care what you did either, I would just want to know what the fuck is happening. The next morning, I took my shower as usual, but my friend ended her shower early and totally forgot I was in there. I was alone. I yelled for her name, but nobody came. I was afraid. I tried to get down as fast as possible. I heard the faucet turn on. I peered around the shower curtain wondering if she had returned. She didn't. I didn't see any sign of a leaking faucet anywhere, nor any turned on. I dismissed it as just the shower pressure increasing, that's a mouthful. Or maybe it was the shower water droplet molecules hitting the floor. I went on to finish my shower. I was afraid to look in the mirror, I have no idea why. I had a very weird feeling in the bathroom. I just left as soon as I could. It was breakfast now and we talked to the volunteer who had the experience and she said it was true. A volunteer came up to us later on and we explained the experiences we had. He said he knew something about the history of the camp, but he said we were too childish and young to hear it. Still wonder what it was. I would have been like, fuck you my dude, cause we're experiencing this shit. Fast forward about a month later, Later, I totally forgot about the experience, other than the one time where a previous student went there and said it was haunted. I don't know if it resonated in the back of my mind, but I remember this just as clear as it was yesterday. That night, I was in a dream. A dream where everything was laid out exactly the same as if I just woke up in the middle of the night. I always kept my door open, out into the long hallway I can see the bathroom at the end. I looked into the hallway at first and nothing was there. Then as I stared into the hallway, a skinny black mass shaped like a person its height was at the top of my door frame at least seven and a half feet tall. It seemed to be even taller than the doorway because of its hunched frame. The more I looked into the hallway, the more it formed and got clearer. In the dream, I was able to fully see the tall, dark figure. It started to lunge towards me and started to attack me. No. I tried to scream as soon as it was coming towards me. At the time, just like in reality, I couldn't scream because my voice breaks when I do. I fought back using my arms and legs to stop it from destroying me, it felt like. Its arms were just barely about to touch me on my face when my dad comes into the room and is able to pull it off of me. I woke up, not feeling scared, not at all. You would expect me to wake up freaking out, but I was just confused. I went about my day as normal. For the next few days, I had forgotten about it most of the time. 
occasionally coming into my mind mostly at night. About two or three nights later, I was in my bed just on an app for foreign languages learning Italian, and I heard three bangs on my bedroom door. It sounded as if the bang was high up and extremely loud, almost as if somebody or something was trying to break the door down. I froze. Every single muscle in my body was paralyzed. It could have woken anybody up from the sound of it, but it didn't. Nobody heard it. What felt like an hour was only 10 minutes. I sat paralyzed staring at my door. Finally, I'm able to break out of shock and text my mom in panic, barely able to even text her and ask if she made the noise or if she can come upstairs to see what it was. I was scared that something might be there and she wouldn't be able to do anything. She didn't text me back but came upstairs into my room and asked me what was wrong. I told her what happened and she assured me it was our cat making that noise. I was like, it couldn't be him. And my mom just said nothing. She didn't want to believe it and she denied everything. No, mom. No, mom. She asked me if I would like her to stay with me for a while, and I wanted her to. I was scared and didn't know what it could have been. I never opened my door at night. I'm left wondering if it was the figure I saw in my dream, or if it was a coincidence between the dream and the field trip. She's like, P.S. I do have the illustration. I put the illustration while I was reading it, I hope. And uh, But this is it again. She said, I do have an illustration of the creature in my dream, as the title suggests, and here it is. I'm not a good artist, but I felt the urge to finish it once I started it. It's actually really good. So shut up, Emily. Here you go. I have a few more shorter stories. I don't know if you'd like to hear them though. I always, I always want to hear them. Am I sweating? I think I'm sweating. You guys make me nervous. I'm sweating. Ah, <sighs> Emily. Fuck me up, my dudes. That was a long ass story, but that was a good one. That was a good one. Somebody literally sent me this. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. I love you guys so much. You guys are so fucking funny. Okay, this one says, open if you're a potato and if you love me. So I'm opening it. And it says, disclaimer, long and there's more than one attached picture. Okay, this is from Kelsey. I like the ones with pictures. I don't know why. I, I, you don't have to send me ones with pictures, but I just happen to be clicking on a lot with pictures right now. I'm sorry. The pictures just like intrigue me because I'm like, what, what could it be? What could it be? Oh my god, she goes, I remember sending you scary stories from my childhood to you on Instagram and Twitter, but you never opened them. So why not tell you my more recent stories? praying you'll see these. I'm so sorry, you guys. I have way more than I ever expected to get. I like thought when I made the email that maybe I'd get 100 or something, but the fact that I have 800 scares me. It freaks me the fuck out. And not to mention that I have way more on Twitter and Instagram. Like I probably have double. What the fuck? I just, I, I'm trying to find a better system to do this, but like it's me and I just suck at everything. I'm trying, but okay, sorry. She said, so this happened last summer when my cousin came up from California. We started realizing creepy stuff was happening in my house. It was small stuff at first and we didn't think much of it. So we would just laugh it off. We started making fun of it all and made up a name for our ghost or demon or whatever it is. We named it Mick J. I love you. Fucking Mick J. How did you come up with Mick J? Please tell me because I need to know. Fucking Mick J. We realized that after joking around, things in the house became more eerie. My cat went missing. We still have, oh my God, rest in peace cat. We even got a video of us in our basement and this door that leads to a creepy black hole. Handle went down and the door opens by itself. Can you send me the video, please? Anyways, I decided I wanted to change my room, so we moved it upstairs. In that room, I have a door that leads to an attic. This door has two locks on it. That room scares me, so I lock it every night. And sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, and it's unlocked, and the door is open. And a black silhouette of a tall man stands in front of the door. You say it so casually. I go under my covers, and when I come back up, the silhouette is gone, but the door remains open. This happens almost every night. What? So I run and lock the door and try to fall back asleep. One night I didn't wake up, but I had a nightmare where I was locked in my attic and couldn't get out. As I turned around, the man was on the other side of the attic and I started crying as he slowly started walking towards me. I woke up. When I woke up, I was hyperventilating and in a cold sweat. As I went to get out of bed, a J was engraved on the wooden bed head. Ever since then, I haven't woken up to the figure or had a nightmare where I was stuck in the attic, but sometimes I wake up to the door being unlocked. P.S. I'll attach a picture of the J. Are you fucking serious? So this is the picture of- I literally don't even want to hold the phone. This is the picture of the J engraved fucking Mick J. Carved his fuck. M Mr. Mick J marked his territory. And then this is the picture of the attic with the blocks and the just... <sighs> you guys- you guys fucking kill me. Every time. Every time. Oh my god, this one says there was a woman watching my dad sleep. Fuck. This is from Marley. Okay. Mm. Here we go. They said, listen, I don't know if you're ever gonna see this, but I wanted to let you know I love you and your videos so much. My name is Marley. I love you too. Also, don't judge my email username. I was 11. I've been too lazy to change it. I literally have probably 400 emails from when I was younger. I'm not going into it. They were bad. I made a new email like every single day because did you guys ever use AIM or am I just really old? Like AOL Instant Messenger. I would always want to change my username on AIM so I would make new emails. Oh, I had so many. 
so many i was so weird my mouth is watering because i just drank diet coke i have a problem all right she said the story starts when i was about two years old and we moved into my house about six months ago my current house my dad woke up one day in the middle of the night and looked to the side of his bed standing there he saw a small native american woman with long hair staring down at him he rubbed his eyes and looked again she just like went right into the story like there's no preface just like zero to 100 within two seconds i just lost control of my phone he rubbed his eyes and looked again she was still there he chucked a pillow at her and she disappeared oh, Okay, me trying to defend myself when there's a random person, I'm just like, are you real? The best part about this is he didn't even believe in ghosts until this happened. Oh, those are my favorite stories when people don't believe in the paranormal and they believe that something is paranormal. I live in a very historical area right near Philadelphia. George Washington literally camped five minutes away from my house. So yeah, the Native American thing makes sense. I was in the kitchen with my mom a couple months later. Keep in mind I was about two. I literally said to my mom, Mama, what happened to the lady with the long hair who used to pick me up and play with me, which what the hell? Yeah, bitch, what the fuck? Also, I'm kind of psychic. It's called clairaudience. I think that is, that, is that how you say it? Clairaudience? So basically, I hear people whispering in my ear before I fall asleep. My house was getting renovated recently and we had to move into our basement. I know from all your storytellings that basements are not a good place to be. <laughs> fuck basements. Anyways, I was falling asleep one night, literally in the midst of falling asleep, and I felt a cold spot on my forehead for about two seconds. In my half asleep mind, I literally said to myself, oh, it's fine. It was just the ghost kissing me on my forehead. That's so fucking casual. Obviously, I sat up and was totally freaked out. About a week after that, I was sick with a sinus infection, so my room was basically basically dark except for a lamp. All of a sudden I just hear a loud thump and my bed moves with me on it. My mom comes into the room two seconds later and I tell her about it and she's spooked too. I'm out of the basement now. Praise the Lord. That's all I've got for now. Hopefully ever. Oh my fucking god. Oh wait and she said she said she said I want to clarify some stuff in the last email. The clear audience thing. I don't know much about it. It's not always when I fall asleep but usually it is. Also sometimes I get weird feelings in my heart and chest area when I'm around very historical places or grave sites. By the Native American thing I wasn't just describing her race. She was as my dad described her in a full-blown Native American clothing and braids and stuff. I know that Native Americans live everywhere, but many of the battles and wars and stuff between the British and Native Americans happen close to where I live. In my bedroom before the renovation, I always felt like there was a ghost in my bedroom. It was just kind of a presence, you know? Like when you can feel something and somebody watching you. After the renovation, I don't feel it anymore. Maybe the ghost just found somewhere else to live. Also, I've noticed people in your recent videos saying they felt somebody pushing down on them. You know, that's the first sign of being possessed. No, I could have done without that part. Now I'm scared. Now, now I'm scared. Now I'm freaked out. Now I'm scared. Because I feel that too. Oh, has the sun been coming in like that the whole time? Sorry. Okay, I'm going to read one more. One more. This one's called The Little Girl in My Basement. Actually, it's really short. I'll read two more. Before I was even born, my mom was downstairs cleaning the basement, and as she went over to wash the old walls, the fuse completely went out. She was hella confused. I <laughs> just, I love when you guys throw random things like shook or hella into your stories. Um, they make me laugh. She got hella confused and just turned it back on like, what the fuck? And then she walked back over and it happened again. So this time she was like, hell no, and tiptoed to the fuse machine thing and turned it back on again. She was freaked out at this point, so when she went over by the wall again, it happened a third time. This time she knew something was up. She put her arms in the air and said, whatever's down here, I'm not trying to disturb you, I'm just trying to clean up a bit and it never happened again turns out there were pictures hung up from the early 1900s that a little girl had made and she didn't want my mom to take them down they're still there to this motherfucking day hell no okay 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 she's like don't touch my shit one more i promise i promise this. i mean i know you guys want me to read more but like we'll see what happens uh this one's called blood covered girl in a cemetery what the fuck jessica all right <clears throat> let's read it hiya so for as long as I can rem like you guys started so casually. Hey, so for as long as I can remember, I've been, p oh my fuck, there's a lady walking downstairs. I don't know why that made me jump so bad. For as long as I can remember, I can see ghosts. My friends can too. So as you can imagine, when we get together, it's kind of a scary and fun time. Where do you find these friends? We have loads of stories, from a lady in black standing at the top of her stairs, staring at us, to a blood-covered little girl standing at the foot of her bed. Oddly enough, not related to this story, at least we don't think so anyway. What? If I saw some bitch covered in blood, I would just die. I would, I, I think I would just die out of fear. I'm gonna die out of fear anyways, but I would, I, in that moment, I would die out of fear. Anyways, to the story, just so casual, again. My bestie and I were staying at her mother's house for the night. Her mom's new house just so happened to be three houses away from the cemetery. Having seen, oh, this bitch keeps scaring me. <laughs> Having seen ghosts our whole lives, both my friend and I decided that we were not going near the cemetery. Her little brother had other plans. Now, whenever we were down, we got handed the task of keeping an eye on her brother. He kind of correctly guessed that the two of us were avoiding the cemetery, so of course he had to run in and begin hiding behind tombstones. I'd kill him. Knowing fully well that her mother would send us in after him anyways, we stuck together and went into the cemetery. At once, we felt like we were being watched, but just convinced ourselves it was her brother. 
We really wanted to believe it was her brother. Anyways, five minutes pass and we're sitting huddled together moving throughout the cemetery screaming for her brother. Okay, we were screaming bribes at him telling him we would buy him a toy if he came out. That didn't really work though and it was around the 10 minute mark when we noticed a little girl standing at the other side of the cemetery pointing to a tombstone behind her. Being far enough away, we just assumed this was a living little girl helping us out so we ran towards her. We were about two gravesides away when we noticed the front of her was covered in blood and her throat was slashed. We both screamed and got the hell out of there and decided for safety measures we were going to spend the night with her grandmother. She lived well enough away from the cemetery, so we felt safe. Anyways, later on that night, we started to become curious and decided to look up murders in that area just to see what we could find. Turns out that years ago, this father went nuts and killed his wife and five-year-old daughter. He slashed both of their necks. Wait, what happened to your brother? What? Did you just left your brother? I mean, I would, I would probably leave my brother. No, I wouldn't. I would probably leave my brother. Is he okay? Just, just wondering. I'm trying to find a shorter one to read because I've been recording for a long time. So just, just give me a second. Not that you guys notice how long it takes. Okay, this one says, fuck the crawl space. It comes with pictures and it's shorter. Okay, perfect. Hello, Emma. 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 Why'd I say it so weird? Emma. The sun's coming in at a really weird angle. We gotta hurry this shit up. She said, hi, I'm a big fan. I've got a really creepy but kind of short paranormal story for you. I would also like to clarify that I don't mind if you use my name if you put this in the video. It's Emma and my YouTube is Cinepa Club. Cinepa Club? I don't know how to say that, but I'll, I'll have her link down below. Go check her out. So a few years ago, I moved into the house I'm currently living in. I have the master bedroom, but the closet takes up an entire wall, so the room itself isn't that big. The closet has always given me the chills. Something about it makes me feel unsafe. Once I even heard the guitar I'd put away in there being strummed perfectly. That guitar is at Goodwill now. Uh, yeah, fuck that guitar. Oftentimes I would also hear whispers or something breaking in the bathroom. The door is right next to my bed so I can hear pretty much anything that happens in there. I started sleeping in the living room because of how uneasy I was in my room. The living room isn't much better though, if I'm being honest. There are windows everywhere and I always feel like somebody's watching me through them at night. I live in a pretty wooded area in a town where horrible things happen all the time. There was once even a sheriff shining a big flashlight down all the driveways on the road. It's a private road so please Police can't go onto the roads without being called or having reason for suspicion. That's fucking scary. The creepiest thing about my living room though is the crawl space above the hallway. I'll put the pictures right here. It leads from the dining room into my brother's room. Each side is shut off by small doors. The side above the hallway next to the dining room is pretty high up. Only my stepdad can reach it on his tiptoes and he's over six feet tall. My mom and I are both five foot five and my brother is seven years old so he's a tiny little man's. I was sleeping on the couch one night. I have insomnia so often I wake up multiple times throughout the night but this time I woke up startled. It was about 3 a.m., so the devil's hour. Fuck me, right? And I looked around the room to make sure nobody had broken in or anything. It was super quiet. Oh no. Then my eyes strayed up to the crawl space doors. They were wide open. Nobody else in the house was awake. Nobody in the house even had a reason to go into the crawl space. Nothing was in there except for some paint. I never slept in the living room again after that. No! All right, and that is all I'm gonna read for now. Thank you to everybody who sent me stories. I'm gonna try to do these a lot. I know that I just did one last weekend, but we're gonna do these a lot just saying. I actually think next weekend, next videos you guys see, I'm gonna be in Iceland. I leave for Iceland on the 21st, I think. I think it's the 21st. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other paranormal stories that you want to send me, please send them to the email. I'll have it linked down below. Or not linked down below, but like written down below. Written? written down below. I promise, I promise, I promise I will take stories from Instagram and Twitter. I just have to go through those. I am just, I'm really lazy. I'm going to be honest with you, but I will do it. I promise I'll do it, but hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye. We saw a table at this one yard sale with a big, we saw a table at this one. Fuck. It sounded as, it sounded as, I started watching The Office about a month ago and I've already watched it three times now. Three times. I'm obsessed. Bye.